is copyrighted. Hey, welcome everybody to the Tuesday episode of the Art of Relationship Show. I'm your host, as always, uh, Greg Dzinski. I'm a fully licensed professional counselor, Detroit's love guru, of course, a relationship and sex specialist here in Metro Detroit and have been for, oh my God, going on like uh, two decades now. <clears throat> a long time. I know I don't look that old, do I? No, I'm playing. <laughs> Just playing. Um, looking at a post I did yesterday about affairs, uh, about cheating, about all those aspects and where, you know, when it comes into play, what your beliefs are, what your attitudes are about cheating and trying to, you know, kick up some revelations about cheating and about potential myths that go on. And cheating cuts across a lot of avenues and relationships, cultures, marriages, <clears throat> and looking at those aspects to where, um, you know what, some people, it hits a nerve, let's face it. It really pisses them off, and, you know, they are very vocal on their beliefs and what affairs are, uh, what it does, and I'm going to go through those. And please join the discussion down below. And also, as always, you know what, this week I'm bringing back, you share my The Art of Relationship show episode on your timeline for a chance to win my book, here it is, The Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite Love and Intimacy. It's the enhanced edition, the newest edition I have out. And here's the back of it, and it is <clears throat> paperback, the exact one you get on Amazon. Um, the ebook is on Amazon as well, so you get a chance to win my book, or you can win a t-shirt right here. Love intentionally, and on the back it has stop hate to get rid of, you know, hatred, racism, discrimination in the world. So, all you have to do is enter, um, you know, share the video on your timeline, and you got a chance to win, okay? It's simple as that. I even pay for shipping. You don't even have to cover uh, shipping costs or anything. I That's on me, okay? Um, that's probably why I'm not rich. So, <laughs> looking at the av avenue, going back to the cheating aspects, and a lot of people, like I said, it hits a nerve. Please, again, chime in on the discussion below. And what cheating does, it devastates a relationship or marriage. It just, you know, wreaks havoc, and it destroys a lot of aspects in a relationship and with your partner, Okay. Um, I tell people, it's like, you know, everybody has these expectations of living happily ever after. Maybe if you choose to have kids, raising grandkids together, retiring together, you know, traveling here, going here. All these goals you have for a relationship and all these, you know what, we'd love to do these together. Um, all those get, they get shattered when somebody cheats. And, yes, even though the research out there stipulates, okay, that there is a differential ratio or if you will percentage of you know what men cheat you know on average 20 to 30 percent more than women do in the US that is false I'm gonna tell you that the differentiation is very very slim it's not that much different anymore it's just women don't admit it they well in public they don't admit it they don't admit it on research on surveys and um, I can attest that the differentiation is very very small between women and men cheating now in the US okay so going on there the biggest myth and there's even other therapists out there that I have visited and actually maybe verbally thrashed if you will that the big myth is when somebody cheats they're always a cheater that they will always cheat they will never stop that is a huge myth people I'm gonna tell you that now I'm telling you that from uh, experience personal uh, professional experience that is not the case okay so when somebody does cheat has an affair that does not mean they're gonna do it again okay there has to be some things in place of course to assure and rebuild the trust okay and another myth is that somebody that does get cheated on you know what that they will never ever be the same they will never ever be able to heal and forgive that person fully that's not true either. That's a huge myth, okay? And that, okay, somebody cheats. Another myth means, oh, they don't love you. They didn't love you 
in the, you know, they never loved you, that's why they cheated. No, that is a myth. A lot of people make a mistake. I don't ever, now get this right, people, I don't ever excuse or condone somebody cheating or having an affair. Never, ever, nor will I excuse it, okay? Um, I look at the dynamics of what's going on in a relationship so I can help that couple. And believe it or not, sometimes the cheating or, you know, the affair aspect, it's almost like if you want to say an addict needs to hit rock bottom before they seek help. Unfortunately, cheating or an affair is almost like that aspect. It's that rock bottom in a relationship. I tell people that sort of wakes up the relationship. Oop, as I try to adjust my chair, sorry. Uh, that sort of wakes up the relationship if the relationship is dead. If, you know what, most affairs I deal with, now this doesn't mean all of them, I said majority of them, deals with, with somebody you know what, is not getting their needs met. You know what, they don't feel loved. They don't feel desired. They don't feel respected. They don't feel maybe cherished or appreciated. These aspects, when this happens, and I'm not talking, oh, I felt this way one day and it caused me to cheat. No, it usually goes on for a long time. I'm talking it could go on for months or even years. And then what happens, someone starts chirping in that person's ear, you know, giving them compliments, you're such a great person, all this stuff. And then it turns, you know what, let's face it, the emotional aspect on the most part changes um, that dynamic and it turns into a physical, potentially, not always, okay? So most affairs, in my experience, they do occur based on someone is not getting their needs met. A lot of people look at it's a selfish act. Yeah, it could be a selfish act. And another aspect, a lot of people, why don't they end the relationship you know what, before they cheat or get a divorce before they decide to cheat. I'm not disagreeing with that, but it's not that simple, people, okay? You have to understand, you know, somebody, when you crave and love somebody and they're not loving you back, it hurts, it sucks. Even though you love that person and you want those feelings to feel cherished, to feel, you know what, desired and craved and loved and appreciated, you want that from your person when you don't get that it hurts. It's almost like devastating Then someone might, you know, build you up, make you feel good, pay attention to you, start listening to you. And it becomes almost like an addiction in a way. It makes you feel good when you want it from that person. And then bam, it starts. Again, there's no justification to it. There's no condoning it. There's no excusing the affair aspect. So there's a lot of myths out there, uh, you know, that go into hand in hand that say, this about cheaters, this about the person that betrays, and they're just not true. Yes, I'm going to clarify, there are people out there that are habitual cheaters, women and men, both genders, that they are going to cheat because they want to, because you know what, it's just what they want to do, that they're fully selfish and they have a hard time, they won't stop. They might be, you know, okay for a couple months, six months, maybe in a year, but they're going to go back and cheat. I usually say, yes, there are people out there, men and women, that are dogs or hoes, and they will never change, okay? Um, that does happen, but I find in my professional experience that that is rare, okay? So, you have to look at you know what the cause of the affair was and I've done numerous shows on cheating affairs and talking about you know I want to talk about the myths and I want to talk about you know the revelations about the affair you have to look at you know what was going on and that doesn't excuse the betrayer at all it just means you need to look at and define what was going on what made you cheat what was going on in your head what was going on in your heart that made you you know what cheat what were you craving Maybe nothing. Well, then some people cheat because of ego, right? Maybe we're getting into the ones that, the habitual cheater that always needs the attention. It always needs that energy, the adrenaline rush from multiple partners, right? We have to look at what's going on because some things we can work on in a relationship, some things we can't. But you need to be able to give an understanding to your partner about what is going on with you emotionally, psychologically. To be able to understand, now, can we work on these needs and come together? Because what happens if the, the betrayer comes back, busts his or her butt to earn that trust back and to do everything perfect? We know nothing's perfect, but to earn that trust back, they do everything possible. And the other person, you know what? 
and can't forgive. Or, you know what, the other person is happy now. They got a trusting partner, never cheat again. But the other one is miserable because they're not getting their needs met. But, you know what, I'm never going to cheat again. You know what, I don't condone that. But then that person, you need to get out of that relationship. I tell people all the time, you know what, why would you stay in a relationship or a marriage if you're miserable, if you're not you know, happy. Yes, nothing is perfect, people, in a relationship. That's not what I'm saying. But you have to look at we're in a relationship because of, you know, feeling love, desire, that type of aspect. Most people, anyways, not being alone. There are so many reasons why. But with cheating, it sort of just sort of rips that apart from your partner. It destroys and wreaks havoc on another aspect, okay? Another, maybe a myth, or out there, maybe not a myth that a lot of people do, if they get cheated on, they're going to tell everybody about the affair. They want to just lamb base. They want the other one to suffer and hurt. I get that. I'm not saying they shouldn't. They need to eat crap and they need to bust their butt to earn that trust back big time. But they want the kids again to say dad or mom. Mom did this. You know, dad did this to me. Oh my God, rot what a rotten guy. But let's say... Um, you know, mom cheated, but you know what, mom's this, mom's a whore, mom's bad and all this stuff. I can't believe she destroyed our family. But dad's a jerk. Dad doesn't pay attention to her. Do you understand? Dad doesn't show her any attention, doesn't show her that she uh, is loved, desired, appreciated, nothing like that. But you know what, the one that is, you know, betrayed, they won't ever say that, right? It's all about me playing the victim role. You know what? I get it. I understand the hurt and the pain. But the more the myth you, you know, myth out there, oh, you need, you know, have to tell the more people that no, it's going to help. No, that's you playing the victim mentality, and it's going to further enmesh the challenges, if you will, or the heartache and the, the battle of trying to heal the relationship or marriage if you want to. Another myth out there I hear a lot. Um, I wouldn't say it's a myth. It's almost maybe a belief that a lot of people say, if I ever got cheated on, I will leave. Okay? That's it. That's a deal breaker to me. And I get that, okay? Um, I'm not saying it shouldn't be. But a lot of people look at, you know, they love somebody and they get cheated on because of whatever reasons that I mentioned, you know, previously. And what happens is they cheat now. What do you do? That's it. I'm going to end 10-year relationship where, you know, we can build and have a great situation. We can have a great relationship and heal that pain. It's possible, okay? So that's one aspect I see and I hear a lot. Greg, I can't believe I'm in my office because I told myself if I ever got cheated on, I'm done. That's it. And it's not that easy. You know, you've heard me on numerous show episodes before talk about and comment on, you know what? Because you have kids is not a reason, the only reason to stay in a marriage or a relationship because you have kids together. Kids deserve better. But you hear, you know, now it's all enmeshed and all entwined. You have your life together. And does that mean because one person made a mistake, a huge mistake, devastating mistake big time, that, that the marriage or relationship can't become closer and can't become even more connected than it was before? I've seen it. I've witnessed it. I've helped couples get there many, 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 many times over the almost 20 years I've been doing this. And it is possible, but it does take a lot of people to, you know, work together at it, okay? Another myth is that the one person that did the betraying, they have to do all the work to make everything, the relationship work, and that now that they have to be the, you know what, the prisoner of the one that was, you know, betrayed. They have to be that prisoner for the rest of their life and relationship. That is a huge myth, and that will end up in divorce or a relationship breakup. Not only the affair, but how you treat each other after that affair. Yes, they need to earn their penance. They need to earn that trust back and work their butt off. But, like I said, we have to look at the dynamics about what caused that affair and be able to look at, you know what, what can we do to build that? What was maybe the person that was betrayed, what was their role in it? And I get that doesn't blame them for the affair, 
Not at all. I want to make sure I don't get taken out of context here, okay? We have to look at, you know, if you were betrayed on, do you ever look at what was I doing, what was I not doing to cause him or her, you know, your partner to stray? That doesn't justify them doing it, okay? The, looking at what the foundations of the relationship are, what was going on that created it, and can we heal that aspect? Like I said, a habitual cheater, man or woman, we got to handle that differently. I don't want somebody to play the fool and say, oh, okay, I love this person and I need to be okay with them. They're going to cheat and I need to be okay with it. If you're going to be okay with that, you know what? No one else lives your life. You do. That's up to you to decide, not me. <laughs> I can tell you personally, I won't be in that situation, okay? But you need to look at what your role was in that relationship. And a lot of people, the myth is that they don't look at that person. They don't look at the person that was betrayed and look at, you know what, what was their role in it? Everybody looks at, you know, the one that did the betraying, the cheater, that they're, you know, she's this or he's that. How dare, oh my God, I can't believe this happened with all this. You need to look at no one lives your life. No one is with you 24-7 in that relationship other than you two. And sometimes it feels like maybe you're the only one in that relationship. And thus it created that scenario where someone made the drastic decision to cheat. Okay, and a lot of people, when they do cheat, they do regret it. Okay, there has to be genuine remorse and guilt on the part of the cheater to be able to start rebuilding that process. But a myth is that uh, an affair or cheating totally can destroy, and the relationship will never be the same after that. Yes, that can be a truth, but if both pe people are unwilling to work at it, and to evolve that situation, okay? But in my experience, I can tell you, there's been countless times where the couples have even become closer, more connected. They're not afraid to talk about anything anymore um, since the affair to help them rebuild that trust, to rebuild the connection of what they want after the cheating episode, okay? That doesn't mean it's not difficult and it doesn't take work, absolutely. But I seen it, like I said, countless times in my office where the couple becomes closer. You know what? Because of the affair. I'm not justifying it. I'm not condoning somebody cheating. And I'm not saying people, oh, Greg said, you know what? They become closer because of the affair. You know what? Don't go out to get your marriage closer or your relationship closer and cheat. Hell no. Don't do that. Do the work. You know what? So cheating doesn't occur reach for each other, be able to talk to each other, okay? Like I said, cheating does devastate. It flips the betrayers, it flips families' lives upside down, inside out, okay? Frickin' back to front, you name it. It just, it just wreaks havoc. But it doesn't have to totally, fully um, ruin a marriage or relationship. It can be rebuilt. But it does take work on both parties. And yes, at first, to build the trust, the betrayer needs to eat crap and do most of the work in building that trust back. But also looking at, you know what, what that person, you know, that they cheated on, their partner they cheated on, what was their role in the relationship or the marriage that created that dynamic that does not blame them, okay? A lot of people, I cheated because you did this, you did that. You need to knock that off and own how you felt. In that relationship or marriage, how you felt, what you did with it, you get me? You felt not loved, not desired, I get all, not respected, all that, I get that. That still does not give anyone the right to go out and cheat. You get me? I'm going to be clear about that. How you feel and what you do with that, that is on you. How you feel, you need to be able to communicate with your partner to say this and get some professional help if there's no movement. Don't go out and cheat. I get it gets very addicting. Someone pays you attention. Someone, you know, shows you they care, they desire, they crave you. Um, it feels great when ultimately you want that from your partner. Okay, that's usually what happens. <clears throat> but there's so much, there's a lot of myths out there about cheating that, you know, the people are just selfish, they don't care, they don't love. 
but I'm also going to tell you because my experience, professional experience, you know, where I see a lot of affairs, majority of them are because there's turmoil in a relationship, a huge disconnect, but there are so many facets to cheating. Um, people don't even realize, okay? There, it could be because of ego. It could be because of um, maybe childhood trauma, uh, being sexually abused. There could, there's so much depth to cheating. You need to uncover the characteristics or the personality of that person that did the cheating and also look at, you know what? What is going on in a relationship or marriage to create that dynamic? Big time, okay? But it's not so simple. Cheating and affairs are so multifaceted that people don't even understand. And they're misrepresented in the media. They're misrepresented, you know, in the news and with friends, right? You probably have friends. Maybe you got cheated on. Maybe you were the one that did the cheating in a prior relationship or current relationship. And you be able to look at, you know what, what is going on and what creates that, okay? So get rid of the myths out there. And if it does happen in your relationship or has happened in the past, what did you learn about it? What did you learn about yourself, number one? And what did you learn about what was going on in that relationship? Never condone or excuse cheating, not at all. But I want you to be able to learn from it and try to figure out what the heck's going on. And some people, you know what, out there, if there's signs, if you sort of got a gut instinct that you feel your partner is cheating on you, and I'm not talking those individuals that are highly insecure. No, I'm talking about if there's signs out there, your gut saying, you know what, something don't feel right. Talk to your partner. We all know people that cheat, they typically are going to lie about it, okay? But if they start looking at and they start doing things differently to prove that they're not, you need to pay attention to what they're doing, okay? I don't want anyone to play the fool. I don't want anyone to get lied to and get manipulated, okay? So be real, be honest, and if you feel a certain way, address it with your partner. Even try to get professional help, okay? So check out my website, theartofrelationships.org. Remember, like at the beginning of the video, just share this on your timeline, the Art of Relationships show episode on your timeline for a chance to win my book, The Relationship Guide, Tools to Ignite Love and Intimacy the enhanced edition or the t-shirt I've shown. I still have sizes small to extra large, I believe, available, okay? And I pay shipping. What's better than that, okay? So everybody have a great holiday weekend coming up or holiday July 4th. Let's thank our veterans out there, forefathers, um, and military people out there as well, okay? So peace and love to everybody out there. Everybody take care. Have a terrific and safe, loving 4th of July.